Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby, St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because we have covered it to daily have some meaningful moments with the Master as we look into the eternal Word of God. This entire week, our focus is on how to get your mind to mind. We're talking about good mental health during the midst of a pandemic that is causing a lot of anxiety and mental and emotional breakdown. And I think the basis for this whole teaching this week is something that the great Dr. Lance Watson said. He said, pastor there at the St. Paul Church, Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia, he said, do not lose your mind in trouble because you're going to need your mind when the trouble is over with. How do you do it? How do you keep your mind stable and balanced? How do you get your mind to mind during a pandemic? Paul gives us the clues right in the fourth chapter and of the book of Philippians. Some of the most powerful, inspirational verses you will ever find is right here in Philippians chapter four. Yesterday, we discovered that Paul said, you wanna keep your mind, rejoice, he says it twice, in your union, in your union with Christ Jesus. In other words, make sure that you have a union with Christ because if your union and you rejoicing because of your union with your job or your health, you can lose those things. And when you lose those things, then you lose your joy. But the Lord, you will never lose the Lord. The Lord is always with you. The second principle on how to keep your mind mentally stable is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Yesterday we looked at verse 4, today verse 5. And this is what it says. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And here's the principle. Yesterday, Learn to rejoice in the Lord. Make sure you're doing that. Two, practice the presence of God. The presence of God is the difference between mental breakdowns and mental stay ups. The presence of the Lord. And, he, and Paul says, he's in jail, he's on death row, and Paul says, let your moderation be known. What does the word moderation mean? Moder moderation means that you're stable. Let your stability be known unto me. In other words, let people see that in the midst of what you're going through, you've got some emotional and mental moderation. In other words, you don't look like what you've been through. <laughs> I mean, people know that you, you've got a pandemic in your money, you've got a pandemic in your relationships, you've got all types of pandemic. You had pandemic before the pandemic, but yet they can't tell it because you, you walk with and you live with such moderation that they can't tell you're going through anything. And one of the great witnesses that we can have for Christ the best way we can be an advertisement for Christ is in the midst of trouble, people see a sense of emotional and psychological moderation. That's what they see. And this is how you get there. The Lord is at hand. What does that mean? That means the Lord is with you. And you have to practice his presence. You have to walk as though God is with you. You have to pay your bills as though God is with you because God is with you. I think the greatest scripture in the Bible that highlights that is Psalm 23 verses 1 through 4. You know it. What does it say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth, that word restoreth my soul literally means he brings my life back. When you are at the very bottom, God brings your life back. And somebody can bear witness to that. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art you are with me. I want you to notice something about these four verses. First of all, in the first three verses, 
Paul, excuse me, David in the 23rd Psalms is talking about the Lord. He is talking what's called first person. You know, there's first person, second person, third person. First person is who you are uh, uh, talking, who, who's doing the talking. So I'm doing the talking, that's first person. Second person is you, who you're talking to. Third person, he, who you are talking about. Now notice in verse one, verse two, verse three, he's in third person. He's talking about the Lord. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He, talking about the Lord, makes me lie down in green pastures. Talking about the Lord. He leads me beside still waters. Verse 3, he's talking about the Lord. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's talking about the Lord. But when he's going through a valley, he goes from third person talking about the Lord to second person where he's talking to the Lord. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And you know what? It takes sometimes valleys to get us to talk to the Lord. The Lord was with him in the valley and he's talking to the Lord and he's saying to the Lord, you are with me. You're with me. He's practicing the presence of God. He's acknowledging that God is with him. The same thing that Paul does in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. He says, let your moderation be known unto all men. In other words, let people see how cool you are, that you don't look like what you've been through. Why? Because the Lord is at hand. The Lord is with me. So what does that mean and why does it matter? What does it mean? What does it matter? It means the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And it matters because if the Lord is with you, God is not there as a spectator. God is there with you as a participant, helping you get through it. So your problem is not just your problem. It's God's problem. Your struggle is not just your struggle. It's God's struggle. Your Pain is not just your pain, it's God's pain. Your burden is not just your burden, it is God's burden. Yesterday, God helped me. Today, God will do the same. How long will this continue forever? Praise His name. And you must, amen, practice the presence of God. I once heard about a boy whose father told him to go out to the barn, it was out in the country when they had no lights and it was dark and go out to the barn one dark night and get something. And as the boy looked out there with the, and couldn't see the barn and he, he said, Daddy, it's dark out there and I'm afraid to go to the barn. And his father said, no son, you know that God is everywhere and that God is out there in the darkness. God is with you. And the boy looked at his father and said, is God really out there in the darkness? And the father said, yes, son. So he went to the porch and he looked out in the darkness and he yelled, God, are you out there? Well, if you are, will you bring that tool from the barn to me? Thank you. Well, God is out there and God is out there not to get the tool for you, but God is out there so that you will have the faith to keep on walking in the darkness, to get where you need to be. And as you're walking in the darkness, you just continue to remember the Lord is at hand and always will be. And there is nothing that will ever cause God to abandon you. Romans chapter eight which is a great chapter. We have to look at that one week doing powerful points to ponder. That's Paul's, one of Paul's great theological chapters. But Paul says this, do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, 
not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. Now, you get that. He says nothing is going to be able to drive a wedge between Christ and his love for us. Nothing. Hard times, God's going to be there. People hate us, God is going to be there. You don't, can't put food on the table, God's going to be there. You're homeless, God's going to be there. You're being threatened, God is with you. Backstabbers, God is with you. And even when you commit the worst sins in the scriptures, God's love will never abandon you. You've all heard the story of a man who was reviewing his life when he went to heaven and he saw two sets of footprints in the sand, two sets of footprints in the sand, his footprints and God's footprints. And as they were walking, he always saw those two sets of footprints. But one day he was climbing a hill and as he was climbing a hill, he only saw one set of footprints. And so he said to the Lord while he was in heaven, Lord, I remember that hill I was climbing. Why did you abandon me? I only see one set of footprints. And God said, son, I didn't abandon you. That was the time you had to climb that hill and you gave up and quit. I picked you up and I carried you over that hill. Those footprints are not yours. Those are mine carrying you. God will walk with you. And when you fall down and can't seem to make it, God will pick you up and God will carry you through. And some of you who are hearing this teaching today can say, you know what? With the hills I've been climbing, I know that the only way I could have climbed that hill was because God was with me. Again, Philippians 4, 5, you want to have good mind balance? Let your moderation be known unto men. Let people see how calm you are. And when they ask, why are you so calm? You say, because the Lord is at hand. Practice the presence of God. Rejoice in your union with the Lord. And this will help you keep your mind during these difficult times. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and help us to really get our minds together and uh, get straight mentally because we can rejoice in you always and you're at hand, you are with us. Oh Lord, I don't know who needed to hear this word, but I pray, oh Lord, that these past two days as we've looked at getting the mind to mind, that everyone hearing this word will begin to incorporate these teachings into their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much. Look, if you don't have a church home that you're fellowshipping with, uh, I'd like to invite you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church, Baptist Church here in Louisville, Kentucky. You can be a, in a digital disciple and a part of the online church. You're getting the Word of God. You can still participate. Come to Sunday school. It doesn't matter where you are. Become a part. Everyone needs to be a part of a church, not only because of what you can get out of it, but because we want to know who you are because God wants to use you to bless somebody else. And, and it's always a blessing when you bless someone else. So if you'd like to become a part of St. Stephen Church, well, we invite you to do that. You email us at info at ssclive.org. Info at ssclive.org. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Help get the word out as we continue on the third point of how to get your mind to mind. And as we close out, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. See you tomorrow.